Hello and welcome to another video at Indies Tech. In this video, I will explain how you can use Triple Five Timer to control a 12 volt 6 cable bipolar DC stepper motor. Now, as you can see on the left hand side, this is my 12 volt bipolar DC stepper motor run by the 555 timer. Now, this motor has got six cable and it has got two of the primary coil inside. This is why they are called bipolar. Now, let's explain the circuit diagram. Before everything, I will explain the 555 timer signaling component first. So, 555 timer has got eight pin. As you can see from the left hand side where the circular mark started is pin number one. Pin number one connected with the ground. Now pin number two is very important where all the clocking input happens. So whatever happens in pin number two affects pin number three generating the clocking pulse. So pin number two starts from the electrolytic capacitor 0.47 microfarad capacitor I used where the negative part of the capacitor is connected with the ground rail and the positive part is connected with pin number two. Now between pin number two and pin number seven 220 kilo ohm resistor connected in parallel configuration. Then from pin number 7 to the positive rail another 2 kilo ohm resistor. So this is the overall pin pin number 2 configuration. If you get this part right then you've done most of the things right. Now let's go back to pin number 3 where the clocking signal is generated and as you can see this clocking signal is directly connected to two of the transistor. Now I, I will skip this part, I will go back to stepper motor configuration. This is a 12 volt 6 cable bipolar DC stepper motor. Now the bipolar DC stepper motor has got 6 cable as you can see the right hand side, the green color cable are 2 ground, then other 4 cable is for 2 primary coil. Inside the DC stepper motor has got 2 primary coil and each of the primary coil has got its own two secondary coil. Now one of the primary coil is responsible for clockwise movement and another primary coil is responsible for anti-clockwise movement. As I said, the, each of the primary coil has got its own secondary coil and they are run by three cable. In my design, the ground is always on. Now to run the motor for clockwise or, or anti-clockwise, you need to turn on the other two cable one after another in sequence. They can't be turned on in any given time together. They need to be turned on one after another. Let's verify the coil configuration as I have just said. So I took off the jumper cable and as you can see, I'm just connecting one of the ground with the ground cable. For the explanation here, as you can see, I will inject the 12 volt voltage with the first green cable and the white and red cable but obviously I need to turn them off in sequence. So for the motor to move clockwise my design circuit need to turn the two of the cable the white and red cable one after another in sequence and the motor will move clockwise. For anti-clockwise movement I need to change the ground the second ground and the blue and yellow cable need to be turned on in sequence then the motor will move anti-clockwise. At any given point only one set of coil are allowed to be turned on otherwise the motor will heat up. Now let's go back to the project schematic. So I have already discussed till this point the clocking signal. Now let's go back to the motor itself. So this is the two of the primary coil. As you can see the secondary coil has got three cables. So each of the primary coil has got three cables and uh, they actually put voltage to the secondary coil. So this cable is the ground. So this same, same color one, same color one. So the ground is connected with this in this configuration and I put four switches to two of the secondary coil cable. So if I turn on these switches at any given time, this part of the circuit will turn on, will, will get the 12 volt voltage to this coil. And if I can turn on this one, it will get the voltage and the motor will move anti-clockwise. At any given time, only one set of the switch are allowed to turn on. On the other hand, the ground is always on. Now this transistor, 
the NPN, NPN TIP31C transistor, so it has got three legs, base, collector, and emitter. Base is a switch, and collector is collect connected with the positive rail, and the emitter is connected all the way through one of the coil. So what happened is that when the clocking signal reached there, so base is the switch of the transistor, so as long as there is a voltage on the base, this two pin will get short, so this positive rail, 12 volt, will go to this cable. Now, this one is only activated when the clock signal is active high. Then what happens is that when this one is active high, the other cable needs to be turned off. So that way I executed this is that, look at this carefully, so these three are same transistor. So what happens is that, this transistor, emitter is connected with the positive rail, then collector is connected, same like this one, with the another of the secondary coil cable. The base, the switch, is always on. As you can see, it is connected with the positive rail via the 330 ohm resistor. I try to make this circuit a bit technical, so what happened is that this transistor is always on, so this guy is supposed to take power always, but I put an interrupter. So we, we all know that electricity follows the path of least resistance. So I have used another TIP31C transistor. This guy is connected with a ground. So anytime there is a voltage here, this ground will be will be getting on. That will prevent any voltage going to this transistor, so this coil will not get any of the power. So this transistor is switched with active high signal. So same signal is switching on this one and this one. So what happens is that when this two is on, this one provide power to this cable, but same time this one turn off this one and there is no voltage here, so this cable is turned off. And vice versa, when there is active low, when there's active low, this transistor is deactivated and this TIP31C get the voltage and it can provide power to the other cable. This way, at any given time, only one of the transistor can be, one of the cable can be switched on and off. So this is toggle between and the thus two of the two of the coils get excited one after another and the motor moves clockwise. But here I you can see I have connected the other cable, other cable in parallel configuration, but I put some switch on. So here is the switch. At any given point, one of the set of the switch should be on. So what happened is that if this part of the so what happens is that they get the same clocking signal, same on and off signal in same sequence. But if you turn on this switch and turn off this switch, the motor will move clockwise. Otherwise, it will happen if you turn off this set of switch and turn on this set of switch, the motor will move anti-clockwise. So I have turned off both of them. So if I turn on this set of switch, the motor will move anti-clockwise. Here you will see. It's quite difficult to turn on this match. So here you can see the motor is moving anti-clockwise. Same time, if I just switch it off, the rotation will stop. Then I will turn on this setup switch and the motor will move clockwise. So this is a simple design. I, I You can make a integrated circuit where the whole thing will be much more neat and tidy. So hopefully I will make this in my next project. This is the end of this tutorial. So if you like this, just let me know your opinion in the comment box. Till then, I will see you at next time. Goodbye.